It's a nearly $3 billion market and it's growing fast. So IV therapy clinics, where you can get cocktails of vitamins and other nutrients, drip directly into your veins. They're supposed to do everything from detoxing our systems to fighting aging. But a new clinical trial in the respected medical journal JAMA highlights some concerns. So let's take a look at the potential benefits, along with an honest assessment of the risks. So most of these treatments, they combine electrolytes with a mix of vitamins and other nutrients. So take this chain of infusion clinics in the US, for instance. So they list IV infusions that are intended to increase energy, speed up recovery, boost immunity, and more. They also offer NAD drips that's touted for its anti-aging and cellular repair benefits. And if we take a specific infusion example like Defender, we can see what it includes. So in addition to a base saline solution, there's glutathione, B12, taurine, lysine, vitamin C, and zinc. And the claimed impact? Well, it's pretty vague. It's meant to keep our system resilient and ready for anything. But here's the critical question. Do we have any reason to think that these infusions will actually work as advertised? Well, the interesting thing about the language used by many of these IV clinics is that it's sneakily worded to avoid promising anything very specific. So in the example that we're looking at here, it's not clear what it would mean if our system would be ready for anything. But you can see that each ingredient is tagged with a proposed benefit that's more specific. So let's have a look at some of those. So consider taurine, for instance. An important study published last year looked at how taurine supplements impacted measurements linked to metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a significant health concern because it increases the risks of heart disease, strokes, type 2 diabetes, and chronic inflammation. So the authors conducted a meta-analysis of the randomized clinical trials. So they included 25 trials involving over 1,000 participants, and they found that taurine supplements decreased fasting blood sugar levels, blood pressure, triglycerides, LDL cholesterol, HbA1c, and insulin levels. So that's why I included taurine in microvitamin. But all of that data is looking at taurine supplements. There's no reason to think that IV delivery is needed to see these benefits. And I'm not going to go through each ingredient. We would see something similar for many of them. They're not picking these ingredients arbitrarily. They've been guided to some extent by experimental findings. But we can't assume that the effects of an oral supplement compared to an IV infusion will be identical. Because typically, we can deliver a much higher dose via via IV infusions compared to oral supplements, and an ingredient that might help at one dose may do nothing at another and may even cause harm at a higher level. So what we want in order to have any confidence in the benefits is a dose and delivery method that's backed up by the clinical trials. So do we have that for these IV infusions? Well, certainly not for taurine infusions, but there is some evidence for vitamin C, which is also included in that Defender infusion cocktail that we're having a look at. So should we all march off and get a vitamin C infusion? Well, the interest in this therapy began in the 1970s in relation to treating cancer. So there were some promising results in early studies and case reports. In one trial, for instance, the average survival time for cancer patients who received vitamin C orally was 4.2 times that compared to those who didn't. And after that initial interest, researchers started to explore the connection. So studies in the lab showed that high vitamin C concentrations could inhibit growth in cancer cells, and the same effect was found in animal models. So if vitamin C was found to be helpful, why not just take it orally? Well, it turns out that there's a key advantage with intravenous delivery. So when we take vitamin C orally, the levels in our blood, they're tightly controlled by our bodies. They can only rise so far. But on the other hand, putting vitamin C directly into our bloodstream, it allows for much higher concentrations. And those higher concentrations are thought to be necessary for any anti-cancer effects. But all of the vitamin C infusion studies so far, they're quite small and of short duration, and we certainly don't have high enough levels of evidence to recommend it for cancer treatment or prevention. And it's the same for claims about treating fatigue. There are a number of clinical trials happening right now that I'm keeping a close eye on, and I'll let you know the results as they're published. But on the other hand, there are known risks of IV vitamin C. So for example, people with a history of kidney disease have developed kidney failure after treatment with IV vitamin C. And there are increased risks of kidney stones, of fluid overload, of hemolysis, which is where the red blood cells are broken down. And there was even a recent study, and get this, of 872 intensive care unit patients. So the group who got the IV vitamin C had a higher risk of death or organ dysfunction compared to the placebo group. So if we back up to the ingredient list for the Defender cocktail that we've been looking at, I personally wouldn't get it or recommend it to my patients because there's a lack of evidence of benefit and there are known harms. Now, the final infusion that I want to look at 
is NAD. So NAD is a critical molecule found in our cells, and it plays a role in areas like energy, DNA repair, and mitochondrial production. And it's touted by these infusion clinics for its anti-aging properties, as we saw above. Now, the studies of the benefits of trying to boost NAD levels usually involve supplementing it with its building blocks. And doing that does raise blood NAD levels, and it seems to have positive effects in animal models. In humans, though, the results so far have been disappointing. But again, what we're most interested in is studies where NAD is delivered directly into our bloodstream. The first study to test this idea was published in 2019, and interestingly, the researchers found no change in NAD levels after two hours of the infusion. And that's because the NAD is rapidly and completely removed from the blood, at least within the first two hours. And the researchers speculate that this is partly because the NAD is broken down into its building blocks, even though it's been intravenously infused. Plus, the NAD molecule itself is too large to be absorbed directly from the bloodstream and into our cells. So the underlying idea itself is flawed. And there were worrying effects that they found in these studies. So most participants, they experience things like nausea and headaches during the treatment. But more seriously, the NAD infusion saw significant increases in inflammation. And the researchers behind the study describe the current status of NAD infusions quite well. So they say, despite its popularity, the science behind the safety and efficacy of NAD IV is minimal. So here's what we often see with the IV clinics. Promoters, they start with a substance that seems to have some benefits in single cell or animal research, and then they proclaim clinical benefits for healthy adults through an IV infusion. And that's despite the fact that in most cases, there's practically no clinical evidence to back that up. But there's an obvious question at this point. So even though we don't have solid evidence about the effectiveness of some of these treatments, they might work, so why not just try it? Well, the problem here is that we're unsure again of the benefits, but there are some very real risks. So for one, there is a risk of overdoses. So even with helpful nutrients, we can get too much, like I mentioned with the IV vitamin C for instance, but this is especially true for fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, and K. These can accumulate and they can lead to toxicity. It's the same thing if fluids aren't given properly. They can cause electrolyte imbalances and fluid overload. It can even negatively impact the heart and kidneys. So even if dosing isn't a problem, individuals might be sensitive to the substances used. There is a risk, for instance, of severe allergic reactions, and we can end up flooding our system with microplastics, as a recent study of IV infusions found. And then there are risks linked directly to the procedure itself. So infection is always a possibility whenever we're inserting needles into our veins, and repeated sessions can often lead to vein-related complications and damage. And then there are issues like improper insertion techniques and errors in dosing. So in many cases, we don't even know what the right dose should be. And this is because, as we've seen, most of the IV cocktails, they aren't built on validated clinical evidence. And that also means that specific formulations and amounts, they can vary greatly between the different clinics. And in addition to all of those issues, there's the matter of cost. So IV therapy is typically quite expensive. Individual sessions, they can often cost anywhere from $100 to over $300 and even more. And we can get a lot of these nutrients on offer through our diet or through supplements, which are dramatically cheaper options. And then it's worth mentioning the regulatory picture for IV clinics. So in the JAMA analysis that I mentioned at the start of this video, they report that the regulations in the USA, not even a single state had legislation directly looking at IV clinics as of June last year. Plus, the clinics, they often create their own infusions which are not FDA regulated. So here's how I advise my patients at the clinic. Based on what we know right now, it is best to avoid these IV clinics. The benefits are uncertain, the risks are real, and the costs are high. Instead, I tell them to focus on proven interventions that make a measurable impact on our health. So the most important aren't trendy, but we've got a mountain of evidence that they work. So the top three that I advise my patients to focus on, they're of course eating a good diet, getting plenty of physical exercise, and prioritizing quality sleep. But returning to health fads, IV infusions, they're not the only one trending when it comes to the wellness industry. There's been a huge surge in longevity clinics offering a whole menu of tests that are supposed to uncover hidden health risks so that you can correct them. So make sure to check out this next video here to find out why that's actually not a very good idea.